Thank you, uh, Rod uh -huh. and Joyce, for coming. And uh, my co host here, Deborah, knows you um, yeah. very well. And I'm going to let her ask you some questions. Okay. And this is a special day the Lord has made, yes. and we will rejoice yes, and be glad in it. <laughs> and so, Deborah, will you uh, well, introduce thank you, them Betty. to our audience? Yes, and, yes mm -hmm. I will. Thank you, Betty, and bless you. It is a great day to be alive in the Lord, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I am excited today to introduce my friends, um, Pastor Rod Height and, and Joyce. Now, uh, they have some exciting things to share, so I'm going to get right into it. They are dear friends. We have a good relationship with them, and I can tell you they're an awesome man and woman of God. And um, they started out in Full Gospel uh, back in 1974 and were with Full Gospel for 26 years. So they have, have probably have a lot of stories they could share with that. <laughs> and now they have Destiny Fellowship Church and been doing that. This is their 10-year anniversary. So we're going to start out. I want to I want to hear a little bit about the full gospel, um, Pastor Rod. Why don't you share what was that like and what was the thrust of full gospel for those who've never ever even heard of it? What yes. what was that? <clears throat> it was uh, awesome. Actually, we could probably say it was 28 years because uh, uh, 1972. I'll be tell a little bit about my age, but my high school Sunday school teacher in our Methodist church took our high school uh, group to the first full gospel businessmen meeting in Decatur, Illinois wow. at Swartz Restaurant. It was upstairs. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I was, as I've, I always uh, had been always bashful. And uh, uh, I could never forget that night that I felt a little uh, uncomfortable and uh, I wasn't used to holding hands while praying. <laughs> and uh, the speaker that night that shared his testimony shared about uh, uh, different things and asked us to get in a circle and, and we held hands. And I started getting hot. <laughs> and I excused myself and went out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And uh, But Must that night, hot. whenever uh, <laughs> uh, I got home, uh, me and my brother, uh, my mom and dad was waiting up for us and was asking us what happened. And through a, a series of events, uh, my mom and dad started getting involved in home prayer meetings. Oh. And uh, they give their heart to the Lord. And uh, uh, there in that Methodist church one Sunday, while I was in high school, uh, our preacher was gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our other lay people in the church uh, did a Billy Graham message that Sunday. Mm. First time I ever heard about hell, heaven and hell. And uh, I walked down that aisle. First time I'd ever seen anybody walk down. Is that right? Uh, in the front of that uh, place. And you were the one that walked down? I walked down uh, okay. with a host of other people that day uh -huh. and give my heart to the Lord while Praise I was uh, 16 years old. And uh, But full gospel really played a, a big significant part in my life. Okay. And then whenever my wife and I got married in 74, we did the book ministry, and uh, we had some uh, uh, awesome, awesome meetings, but we'd carry those books in and out <laughs> uh, wow. and all those uh, meetings. And uh, But the banquet hall would always be filled, and then we did, did special events and had Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, uh, just to name a few. Uh, but and then 1975 is when they started hosting the... the uh, uh, Central Illinois Regional Convention indicator out at the old Holiday Inn and people from all around the bordering states was coming and sharing their testimonies and and then uh, like I said I was always bashful but it, during that time uh, uh, whenever <laughs> we uh, uh, started growing up and actually we start tried to start a young men's full gospel and I was the chapter president and uh, uh, we'd bring different speakers in, and uh, uh, and then I worked my way up, so to speak, and became the chapter president of the older <laughs> uh, group. And uh, but how we got our start was going around and sharing our testimony in Iowa, uh, Illinois, Indiana, and Missouri. And Joyce and I would tag team and share what God had done uh, in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. I remember going to a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, my my sister, 
uh, her best friend's parents were highly involved, the Gideons, mm -hmm. and they took her. She got filled with the Holy Spirit. She came home. I was like, whoa, if God will fill her, he'll fill yeah. me. Yeah. And so <laughs> we've all had those experiences. Uh, so anyway, I really, you know, was um, searching to get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's pretty much how I got filled with the Holy Spirit anyway. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, marriage here now. This is your lovely bride and mm -hmm. you've been married 40 years. Can you tell, maybe she'd like to yeah, tell how you her, met. Her talk. <laughs> how, how you met him? Well, I was working at a grocery store in high school, and he came in to get some deodorant and gum, I remember, <laughs> and he introduced himself to me, uh, but I was dating another guy at the time, but on one of our dates, he took us to Rod's house, and um, we sat around and played cards, and pretty soon Rod asked me out with permission of the other guy. And the one thing I remember the most about him is when we had gone out after the first night, he said, um, I gotta tell you something, I'm a little different than some of the other guys perhaps you've dated. And he told me about his experience with the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. I was raised a little Baptist girl, deacon's daughter, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And my, my plea to God was, I wanted more of him. I wanted all that I could have. So. Needless to say, on Sundays and Wednesdays, I was usually down at the altar <laughs> asking for more. But God did hear my prayer, and when I met Rod, um, I started going to full gospel businessmen with them. It took me six months of reading books and um, going to meetings to actually understand what this experience was. But God met me there, and I prayed the awesome. prayer, and... Uh, my life is completely different. I'm, I do, cannot imagine my life without Holy Spirit because it's directed every step of our 40 years of marriage together. From our children, we lost our first baby. I miscarried with the second. We have three beautiful children, seven grandbabies. Mm -hmm. But there's a day when I thought perhaps I would not have healthy mm -hmm. children and mm -hmm. God met us there as well. So, Full wow. Gospel was kind of the foundation, you know, of taught us how to love people, how to reach out and touch people. Out of that came Women's Aglow for me. I was a leader in Women's Aglow for a number of years in the Decatur area. And um, like Rod said, he just kept growing us up until today. We're still, we're, we're still growing up. We haven't arrived. But it's such a privilege to be pastors and to have that call up on our life. And to know that he's chosen us, you know, he's chosen us to be a part of his kingdom and what he wants to usher in because he loves all of us so very much. He doesn't want anyone to be without knowledge or to be left behind and be without wisdom. That's good. Did that answer your question? Yes. That was a long yes. story short. That was exciting. <laughs> no, it was good. Good information. Good. So, so tell us about how did you know, Pastor Rod, that um, you were to launch out and, and have your own church body? Yes. Um, back in, I want to back up a little bit on Joyce's testimony after losing our first baby and her having a miscarriage the second time. 1977 at Full Gospel Businessman. Kenneth Copeland was there, but he was not the main speaker that night. Uh, but after the uh, speaker that night got done, he says, uh, if you have a need, he says, I want all of these men up here on the platform to come down and pray for you. Joyce ran to the altar that night. I just got out of the hospital. She had just got out of the hospital. Oh and, um, and I ran with my Aww. Bible underneath my arm. Aww. And she didn't have a name tag, but Kenneth Copeland was the one that went up to her mm. and called her by name. I fell on oh my God. knees. I fell on my oh knees, my. and Kenneth Copeland said, "Joyce, stand up." Mm -hmm. And of course, I stood to my wow. feet. But I was just so in awe of Holy Spirit. I recognized the voice because I had listened to Kenneth Copeland tapes for two to three weeks while I was in bed. You know, in the mm -hmm. process of the miscarriage, so it was a familiar voice. I knew right away who it was. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he he encouraged her. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to edify, exhort, build up, mm -hmm. and he give her, he give us hope that we wasn't going to ever have to go through that again. Mm 
Oh, and so we had a God. word to stand on by God. Yes. And we have, to, we have to look at the word. This is what we stand on. And from that time forward, the prophetic word was very strong. We didn't uh, always understand it at first, but we have really uh, grown. And it was through different prophetic words. <laughs> and uh, the answer to your question, Deborah, how did we know we were supposed to start a church? <laughs> In 96, 97, people started calling me pastor. And yeah. I was just, uh, before I became a national <laughs> state of Illinois director with Full Gospel Pittsburgh, and it was kind of a humbling thing. And uh, I thought, me, a pastor, you know? And, uh, but we were in a meeting down in uh, Carrollton, Georgia, Benji Clark Mallory. I don't know yes. if you remember Benji Clark <laughs> yes, Mallory. <I> do. <laughs> she was up in this area several times speaking, but we was at her conference and she stuck her finger at me and says, Rod Height, if you don't answer the call of God, you're going to be six feet under. Ooh. And, uh, and I knew, I just knew that I knew in that whole weekend, the Holy Spirit, uh, and I wept like a baby that whole conference. And uh, because that's an awesome. You just needed a more direct word. I, just, I guess I just needed a more direct word. Kind of a man up day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, Time uh, to man up. Yeah. Exactly. And so from that day forward, I said, okay, God, you're going to have to open up the way and show me how to get there. And so uh, I was a bivocational and, uh, you know, kept, kept working, but uh, had a chance to go to ministry school in 2000. And uh, even whenever we got out of uh, ministry school, the prophetic word was, some of you students are gonna go home and your ministry's gonna take right off. And some of you gonna go home and it's gonna like, uh, it's not gonna happen right away. And so got home and um, I always, uh, my thing is, you know, we can wait on God, uh, I've not always been one to go immediately uh, to that. Uh, it's the world I'd, calling. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't want to be too late on God. I want to be right on time. There's a season that says in Ecclesiastes for everything. And so uh, I had this chance and uh, we started doing uh, home prayer meetings. And uh, by 2005, we decided to, to launch out. And uh, fe uh, February 27, 2005, we started Destiny Fellowship and uh, uh, because we need to have fellowship with one another. And usually it's one-on-one -on -one first. Uh, but whenever we got ready to build our first building, we've been taking up an offering during our, our just our home prayer group. And we had $8,000 saved, and that was the exact oh, amount of down payment we needed for our first building. Mm -hmm. And so the rest God's is detail, history. Isn't he? He yes. is very, yes. he's detailed, He's very detailed. <laughs> wow. That is, that's amazing. Yeah. So um, what's your favorite thing about pastoring mm -hmm. and, and your ministry there at Destiny Fellowship? Yeah. Uh, it's really been neat to see what's happened in the last 10 years. Uh, whenever we uh, started, we started in a firehouse and can tr completely transform that building. And, uh, but it's ministering to people and seeing their lives changed mm -hmm. from where it's like you're untying them and bringing them and, and uh, throwing them the rope of hope. Mm, I like that, good. the rope of hope to pull them out of the, the, the junk that they see themselves in mm -hmm. to give them. Uh, to edify, exhort, build them up and say, yes, there is hope out there today, mm, even in the so midst true. of doubt and fear. That is so true. And boy, if there ever was a time where we needed to be doing that, it's today. It is. The way our world is and yeah. the things that are going on in mm -hmm. our world today, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's really important in this day and age. Do you have a, a youth group? Can you share about your youth? Um, what's going on with the young people today? And what do you see is a big drawing card for the young people? How, how does that work? Yeah, uh, we do. We have a teen ministry, an awesome kids church. And uh, I believe that we're going to see, uh, this is what the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me about, is uh, I want to get the younger kids, even in our Sunday morning service, and a couple weeks ago, uh, I felt like somebody needed to come up for prayer. 
and I was going to have all the kids come up and pray because uh, the Bible says, come as a child. Well, a child doesn't have any indoctrination of, of what is to happen, what isn't. Yes. They believe so, what, they, what yeah. you tell them. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that same Jesus, there's not a little Jesus and a big Jesus, that right. same Jesus is in them. And in fact, this past Sunday, I had the opportunity to baptize my uh, seven-year-old granddaughter, 11-year-old oh. girl, and oh. a 26-year-old girl. And, uh, but this is something I decree and declare over them, that they are going to start touching lives. Yes. And, uh, and just to see that transformation. So I believe in the church, our greatest years are getting ready to happen. Yeah. And I believe it's starting mm -hmm. right now yeah. because people are getting hungry and uh, because of fear and doubt mm -hmm. in this world, this decaying world that we live in. A yeah. child to lead them. Exactly, a child shall lead them. And all over the world, we're hearing about children having revival. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I believe what you're saying is yes. is just the beginning. Yes, that's right. Praise God. Yeah. And our grandbabies are just at that age. They're just so precious in their innocence, but they're so sensitive to Holy Spirit, you know. Right. And our grandbabies are like three, four, five, seven, ten, you know, just in that age where they are very curious about Jesus and Holy Spirit. Our six-year-old granddaughter received the baptism of the Holy Spirit recently, and they just want to know more too. We got to take them there. We got to be the leaders. Boy, it's it's really so important in this day and age to be endued with that power. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, in the things we're facing in this day and age, just sitting back and, and having an itty bitty tiny drop of belief is not going to cut it in this day and age. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yes, whosoever believes on the Lord, w that is true. But there is so much opposition, it's, it's hard for them to stay planted in their belief mm -hmm. right. in this day and age. But boy, that dunamis power, when it comes, you can overcome things <laughs> that you never thought you could overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, when you feel that power rushing through your spirit, mind, soul, and body from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Rod, how would you explain the Holy Spirit to an audience that uh, been raised not to understand mm -hmm. that gifting? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, we accept the Holy Spirit just like we do salvation. We have to take it by faith. And uh, back whenever I was in high school, when my mom and dad was having these home prayer meetings, I was the last one of four boys to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I was afraid. And I, so I, I know out there, whenever you're talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, we have this tendency to, you know, shriek our shoulders and, and not know about that. But the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's, he's a guide. And whenever Jesus said that uh, I'm leaving and I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit, you know, we need the Holy Spirit today like never before to give us so wisdom true. in how to deal wisely in the affairs of this life. <laughs> and so... <laughs> My, in fact, it was my little brother at that time says, Rod, you big chicken, we have what we called the hot seat. And he says, you haven't got it yet. And so I went and sat in the hot seat that night. And it was probably 1030, 1030 at seat. night whenever I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, my, mom, my mom fixed breakfast for everybody because it was 2 o'clock in the morning before everybody left. But the, the, those were... The good old days, but you know what? The good old days aren't over yet. No. Oh no! They're just they're just beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Bible says that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And I just encourage mm -hmm. everyone out there today, and you, you can pray right there where you're at, and say, Holy Spirit, uh, I, I receive you right now, and right. and lead me and guide me in all truth. And there's a scripture that came in my mind uh -huh. uh, about you will be endued with power. Exactly. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, exactly, and a lot of people don't have that power. They That's sure right. They got saved, Joyce, They're struggling. As you They're know. struggling. Yeah, and uh, they They'll don't know. know. They've they never been know. taught. Yes, yeah. but uh, full gospel and the women's of glow sure taught them. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Sounds like your church is teaching. Yes, yes. They, yes. If they want that power to come to your church, yes, and you lead them into that, mm -hmm. yes. not only saving knowledge but uh, the exactly. power to 
to walk the walk. Right, and to be a witness. It yes. says that whenever you ask the Holy Spirit in your life, you get empowered to become a witness. And right. like I said before, uh, I was pretty bashful growing up. I would have been the last person in school to get up and talk in front of people. But God, uh, the Holy Spirit, when he comes up on your life, he gives you that boldness. And, uh, but... You sure got it. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't always like this. And uh, I can remember at Full Gospel, the first time <laughs> that I uh, became the MC of the meeting, mm -hmm. that uh, I had to, uh, my knees was having fellowship with one another. <laughs> and uh, but sometimes Never we have to, I guess you, you have to fake it till you make it, so <laughs> to speak. But, but I, sp I, I tell people, faith is spelled R-I-S-K risk mm -hmm. and there's some things that we don't want to step out of our comfort zone to do but sometimes we have to do it and uh, it's just like the fruit on a tree where's the fruit at it's out on the limb it's not mm -hmm. but we we become a mm -hmm. bunch of uh, tree huggers <laughs> yeah. and we want the fruit there but it's out there actually right. out on the limb you have That's to do right. it afraid we have to do it afraid and, and but God will meet us. Then it gets less scary. Yeah. Exactly. And we're ministers of the gospel. I mean, we are the pastors of the church, but it's not the pastors that's going to lead your friends and their mm -hmm. friends. It takes all of us working together. The that's body. how God intended it. Yes. That's how God right. wants it. Yes. And uh, in so many churches today, uh, we see, uh, and this is how I was brought up because of the denomination that I was in, mm -hmm. that uh, the pastor did all the work. Well, yes. I realize today as a pastor, I can't do it all by uh -uh. myself. And that's why Ephesians says he's equipped the saints to do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. So we, that's what our job is, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry today. That's and Because uh, I, I can't be everywhere. That's why you put evangelists out there, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm part of that part. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's an exciting day to be here. Mm, yes. yes, it is. Well, you you are a team. You know, it <laughs> takes uh, someone who is, um, your both goal is to win the lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're ye evenly yoked. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, be ye not unevenly yoked. Yes. And uh, w now in your ministry, Joyce, how are you training the women? I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe you might say, do Jessica, you have a women's group? We have a women's group, and uh, the really neat thing of it is, um, I guess I, I could be called the leader, but I have many leaders within that. I mean, we have several Bible studies, you know, on several nights of the week. It's like two and three, four nights a week. There's something going on at the church, and two oh of those are, are women's meetings. Three of them are. So um, the women are right in there saying, hey, I know that I have a call in my life and I want to, I want to go there. Mm -hmm. So yes, that training is there and God, women are so, not that men aren't special, baby. But <laughs> <laughs> God really has a great intent for women, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's um, so important this day and age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so true. So true. And it's really exciting to me in this day and age to see that complimenting. You know, we've had the past seasons of women's lib. They're trying to get their rights and all this friction. But I really see a yoking together. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago it was all about the pastor. But you didn't see the pastor's wife get up much or anything. But you're mm -hmm. seeing a team. This mm -hmm. day yes. and age, it's a team. Yes. And it's, you know, two halves make one whole. And it's like, well, and of course Christ is the head of everything. But when you yoke together, wow, if one can put a thousand to flight, yes. two can put 10,000 to flight. Yes. So that yoking is what I see so exciting among pastors and churches, mm -hmm. you know. And that what strength the, gives the church the strength that it has, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you had a Sunday school teacher that took you to full gospel yeah, business. A Sunday school yeah. teacher to oh, take me to full gospel. How important and, um, that was. Yes, and uh, so thankful for that gentleman. And, uh, you know, whenever Joyce and I first got married, I wasn't the leader, the, the Christian leader that I was supposed to be, but it, uh, it, it took prayer through her. <laughs> and and one, one night, I'll just have to share this, she had a meeting with this 
former Sunday school teacher of mine and his wife. Yes, I did. <laughs> to <laughs> I talk them about on the phone. me. Uh oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh uh, but it's through much prayer because she was so far spiritually above me. But I just would tell the audience today women, keep praying for your husbands. Mm. Keep praying for your husbands. That's good. And, uh, men, and I had a pastor's wife who said, if, if your husband's not where you know that he's to be, then you pray for him, you mm. intercede for him. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that's what I did. Praise yeah. God. God answers prayer. <laughs> yes, he, he does. does. <laughs> well, Most definitely. Uh, Deborah, we have uh, four minutes left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we're going to wind it up. Mm -hmm. And we want you to speak to the audience out there. Okay. And is anything you want to share before he does, Joyce, is chime in or Deborah. And, well, it's an exciting testimony of what God can do. How exciting is it, you know, to see where you both came from and how God had a plan. He knew all the time. He wasn't up there wringing his hands. Who am I going to put Joyce with? He knew <laughs> all along, didn't he? So it's, a, it's just a beautiful thing. I just praise God for yes. what he's done, you know, in this connection. And my husband and I have been there many times. We went there regularly for almost a year before we, when we were in the process of birthing our ministry. And I can tell you, it's an anointed place where you can hear from God. When you enter in the sanctuary, you feel the presence of God. So we praise God for what he's mm -hmm. done in you guys' lives and that we're privileged to know you and <laughs> watch what God's doing. So is there anything you want to share last minute or so you want to Thanks for letting us come and share yeah. because, oh, exactly. you know, that's um, that sensing of, of where God is taking us is, it's exciting. It it's is. exciting. It I is. used to be afraid, not anymore. I'm excited. <laughs> that's a good, <laughs> that's yeah. good, that's good. Yeah. Okay, Ron, do you okay. want to end uh, yeah. this uh, program with a call to the people? And yeah, I just uh, want to encourage men and women out okay. there. It says in Habakkuk 2, verses 2 and 3, to write your vision down. Yes. And some of you have lost your hope. You've lost your dream. And um, uh, I was a farm boy, and, but people started speaking into me. And uh, some of you has got business on your mind, and you think, how in the world am I going to do that? Well, I want to encourage you this week to write down your vision, as it says there in Habakkuk 2, verses 2 through 3. And... Uh, uh, and ask Holy Spirit to come into your life. Uh, and if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, ask Him that first to, and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. And then ask Holy Spirit to indwell you, to undo you with that dunamis power, as my sisters have talked about today. And uh, I, uh, in the last uh, 40 years, I uh, raised up uh, three different businesses and uh, have recently sold those. Uh, to become pastor full-time and uh, but I just want to give you a chance to pray today and I, I want to lead you in a prayer Heavenly Father we thank you right now uh, uh, Heavenly Father we just ask that you would come into my life I just repent of my sins and ask you today to forgive me of those sins and wash me with your uh, blood and make me white as snow and Holy Spirit I ask you to come in and dwell with me and give me that dunamis power and I thank you, Father, right now for doing this. In your precious name, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Mm -hmm.